The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into the Cyber Collective, how cool does that sound, has actually been a financial advisor himself owning his own practice. He's a bit of an outside the box conference attendee like me, keen to learn from sort of overseas finance professionals and even some, you know, other weirdo, other industry conferences and has recently in the last few years entered the advice tech space himself. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Fraser Jack. Yay. Gosh, I love the intro. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. I'm so excited to have you on the show. What I should have said in the intro too is you yourself has ho- have hosted Ensemble Podcasts. So. Oh, yeah. What's this podcast thing you're on about? Yeah. I don't, how, how, can <laughs> I I watch it? how can I watch it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're a bit meta here. Host, yeah. host interviewing previous host of the host of, of all these things. So it's fantastic. Now, we're going to dive into the Cyber Collective. We've got lots to cover so much going on in your world, but let's get to know you a little better through your use of technology. What's your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Uh, yeah, look, I do. I do. I uh, pretty tragic, of course. Uh, being a, uh, a next generation, we love our emojis, don't we? Yeah, our, we our, do. our next gen. We often get told to stop, but uh, but I, look, mine are all pretty positive. They're either happy faces, cele- cele- celebratory type emojis, you know, the uh, the, the, the congratulations piece. Um, but probably the strong arm is the one that I use a fair bit. I like to uh, I like to make sure people know that they're they're strong. So they're I think the strong arm and the and the, and the happy faces are, are my uh, nice. go to. Nice. Do you know? I think that's the first time the strong arm has come up. I think there you're you you're first there on you the go. show. Well I've got, done, you. I've got a, I've got a few love hearts there too, but no. don't tell anybody. No, secret. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So if you then had to delete all the apps off your smartphone, and we all have so many now, which three would you keep if you could only keep three of them? Oh God, that's a uh, that's a, a horrible question, a horrible <laughs> thought and idea. What, what's the point? No, I think uh, the ones I probably use most uh, would be the Messenger. Uh, isn't it tragic that most of my apps are all work apps? They're like Messenger, LinkedIn. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, Microsoft, you know, doing yep. your emails type thing. So I actually, um, uh, and of course for telephone, I actually use my phone <gasps> as a phone quite often I spend a bit of time of. on the phone, which, uh, which is un, un, you know, like a old school, very old school. That's so true. How actually, you are one of those people that will be messaging a bit, won't we? Like it'll be a, a Facebook message that something will get said and then my phone rings, right? It's yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I'm like, I can't, I'm like, I've got too much going on in my brain to just <laughs> use my fat thumbs to exactly. type out a message. Exactly. So I need to, I need to get on the on the phone and actually and talk speak to a human being. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kicking it old Absolutely. school. Absolutely, oh, I yeah. love it. 
So yep. let's dive into the Cyber Collective and to give the listeners some context who, I mean, they may have seen you at events. You've been out there sort of talking about cyber risks and, and what we all need to be far more aware of. Um, but give us the, like the category you sit under in an advice tech sort of space. And I know it's broader than just for advisors, but sort of what group do you sit under? Who are you sort of lined up against when people are sort of looking at a service like yours? Yeah, I guess I guess the best way to describe our service, I mean, there's and there's a, and there's a couple of pieces to this puzzle, but essentially, um, we're a, we're a platform that provides educational services to right. advice firms, pre- predominantly financial advice firms. We call we say financial professionals because that in- incorporates uh, people who hold really really important information and mm. data about their clients, um, and they're generally small to medium sized businesses or smaller licensees because they don't have the in house facilities to be able to provide this. So I sort of I sort of say we're a bit like a Kaplan, but for cyber and for every single financial uh, every single team member. In an in a financial advice firm, yep. not just yep. um, not just the AR score. So much education and training is based around. Oh, let's let's give CPD points <laughs> to the authorized representatives because that's a learned behaviour that we, we're used to, mm. which is great. By the way, I'm not getting, I'm not bagging that. I'm just saying that for when it comes to looking after your clients' data, every single team member is is just as as important. Um, so really, it's around making sure those team members uh, know what they're doing, know how to use the technology that they have in place, because that's a big part of our process. Um, and um, yeah, and and being able to report and do a whole lot of other cool things on the platform. It's such an interesting point, isn't it? When you think about CPD, and of course, you know we've got the the um, dual uh, uh, CPD events that Ensemble put on, where we all go hard for a day and we get lots of points. What it's all about then is theory. Like they're always theory based. That sort of learning, isn't it? Like it's very it's technical and and theoretical or academic, and whereas often what we need is the practical, like the the thing I need to do or the thing I shouldn't do, you know, it's just, it's a different yeah. type of information, isn't it? And there's sort of, there's three, you're exactly right about the academic, and there's three sort of things that we like to focus on when it comes to the education. One is that it's, it's you know, you learn something, um, which is obviously the point of education. The, the second area is that it becomes a part of a habit. So it's yeah. not just about knowing something, but it actually forms part of your day-to-day habits and part of your day-to-day activity when it's whether it's working with your clients, whether it's working with your kids, whether it's working with your parents, your community, everybody around you. It's about being a good cyber citizen and, and having a good life skill, but it becomes a habit. And so it's a very different – awareness training is very different to it, um, that 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 training that you talked about being mm. being um you know theoretical or academic yeah training. yeah academic so it's about applying like what, the way that we do it is one topic at a time very short sharp like five minutes of training is all you need but often so once right. a fortnight and becomes front of mind always thought about and, and not not difficult or co- completely co- complete but just just a bit of a the Goldilocks thing, right? Yeah. Just right, not too, not too heavy, not too light. So, it kind of needs to be for that individual, and everyone's different. That's the other tr- tricky right. thing that we find. Everybody's different in a firm, so, um, so that's what you got to try, try. That awareness training, not just the information, but the taking the learnings forward into a habit is important. And the third area that we um, that we really focus on is the the demonstration of, of of proof, if you like, you know, like providing the proof, and that is around reporting and board reports, and because. Um, we we live in a world where compliance is big, you know, mm. like, and you've got to be able to have all the evidence and 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 stuff behind you to say, yes, my team were all trained, and here is exactly what they've done. Here is exactly the time they did it. It's over this period of time, um, and and you can you know you can back it up with the um with the with the compliance. It's an interesting thing too. You made your point the point about um you know all the different facets of the business and all the different um, team members, and it is I think when I when I look at the way we interact as an industry, it is very advisor centric naturally. I mean, I, I get why, but for everything, like, like we sort of see them as the pointy end of everything. And, and, 
does become something of a, a soft spot, like a soft underbelly, because we're not necessarily applying the energy to all the other people in our teams. And those could be suppliers, it could be partners, it's not just your your literal staff. There's all sorts of people. And I think, you know, if anything that I've become aware of with cyber and all these risks is how connected we all are. All right. That's a yeah. big deal in all of this. Yeah, and if I if I if I if I go back to that point that you made about how many times does that the authorized rep have to go back to the business and then say, oh, I learned this at the PDA and learned that at the PDA and 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 we want to do this and the other and everyone just looks at them going, uh, like, uh, that doesn't make sense. You're not yeah. because they they've they've had the advantage of learning about it for an hour and coming up with one good idea and they've got the context behind them and the rest of the team just looks at them and goes, uh, uh, and we're supposed to do this when you and, know like yeah. the why uh, and what, that's yeah. the scenario. So I think. So I think, and I've, I've heard the, um, you know, we, we, we concentrate on the team as such and, and the team being the, the first line of defense, not the weakest link. Yeah. But when it, when we talk about the weakest link, who is the weakest link in the, in the business? Often it's either the new team member who hasn't been trained yet or the CEO of the business yes. or the owner of the business yes. who thinks that that doesn't have to apply to them, right? Yes. I mean, all my team are doing uh, cyber training, but I, I don't need to because, I, you know, I, I'm, no one's going to get me in trouble if I don't do it. So yeah. Uh, I think we've all been in that scenario where, um, you know, you think, oh, this, I want my team to do this thing, but I don't always follow my own um, advice on that one. I don't always follow the rules. Absolutely. And this is, um, you know, this is one of those categories where we we just can't call ourselves experts. We can't say, oh, but I know that stuff. We can't say that. You know, this is, this is like learning self-defense. Unless you are actually a martial arts expert, you can't say, that you know how to defend yourself well. This is that. St- this is just the cyber equivalent of that. We're all just learning self defense, right? And so, you know, you can't pretend that you're we're experts, you know. And and there's so much to learn and understand every time. <laughs> I mean, I know, like, I'll call you and I go, "Oh, I don't fully understand this," and you'll give me another insight. I'm like, "Oh, right. Yep, there's another layer, right?" So it's just it's this constant, almost like we are going to have to invest that ten thousand hours to become you know, experts in another category that isn't advice because this is such a big issue for us all, you know, and, and the impact we can have on our clients because of it. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I know you like talking about ninjas a lot, so um, <laughs> but let, let's use that analogy. But you're absolutely right. You know, if somebody's learning a martial art, they go along for, for, for weeks and weeks and weeks and have that the discipline. Yeah of ongoing training and, and the discipline of, um, you know, the amount of times, the amount of times that they would train versus the amount of times they would actually use their martial arts in a, in a combat, uh, war scene, you yeah. know, where they're actually fighting somebody, um, is, is, you know, the proportion that you just really just have to keep training, yeah. keep sharpening, sharpening the knife, if you like. And our ninjas yeah, I mean, are now getting day, training in the number. We talked about the different team members and you mentioned that, um, you know, these short, sharp pieces of content or, or education is your take that even it's not just short pieces and it's not doing it regularly, but also repetitively. So is part of it sort of revisiting some of these concepts? Is that part of what you, you sort of factor in? Cause I know I've just discovered even with learning tech, like the only way we get really proficient is if we've got to like use it over and over and over again for a period of time because your brain just forgets too quickly. Yeah, I think I think we have a lot of things in our brain, don't we? And yeah. depending on their level of fear or concern or prioritization or motivation, it gets pushed back. So if things are regular and consistent, then that does create habit. And you know, there's there's all sorts of different um, books around around you know how to create good habits and you know make them you know make them easy to do and make them you know all those sorts of things. So yeah. there's you know atomic habit and there's um you know there's the hook around variable reward and all these sort of things that form habits and i think cyber is certainly one of those things where to make cyber interesting and engaging because from a topic point of view you can't just be all about fear because fear just fear will get your attention yeah and you might you and you if you've ever driven past a car crash you'll you'll remember it right because you can remember those details but it's not always a great motivational place to be in so um you know, you want to you want to make it. You you, you want to use. Oh, I always talk about with content. There's a little bit of fear in, in the recipe, but you've got to use it like salt. You know, you've yeah. got to make sure it's not too salty. Not it's too there salty. to enhance the flavour, not to not to make make it crazy. But um, but yeah, there is there is a little bit of though. Like you said, there's a lot of different areas. Um, there's a lot to learn, and there will always will be. That's the yep. point because everything's always changing uh, and updating. So it's about making sure. Um, that people are utilizing like for example passwords 
the history of passwords is changing, has changed. Yeah. Um, you know, it's gone from it's gone from doing a password to having multi-factor to using, you know, biometric technology, facial recognition. You know, you, these days if you open your banking app, you you look at your phone, you don't. Um, yep. You know, you don't type in your password. Yeah. So you know, and that's all changing as as we go through. Um, so yeah, and and so it'll be it'll be never ending. And on that, if you really, and this, I guess this probably particularly applies to those of us sort of Gen X or older, but um, if you ever want to really get a wake up call on the evolution of passwords, there's a YouTube video of a comedian, Michael McIntyre, and he does a bit on passwords. And he starts with when we all first had to give passwords and we all started with the, you know, word password and he goes through the evolution and the more he goes through it the more disturbing you can hear the audience get because they're like oh my goodness he's just described exactly how my password has evolved over time and it's so true it's sort of it was one of the things that really stood out to me of we can we cannot just allow ourselves to determine these things because we're just no good at it you know and we all do it the same way um so i'm i'm sort of curious about that then in terms of, you know, a practice that engages with you guys, have you got a sense of, you know, who manages to go – because it will be a journey, right? This is a, almost a transformation uh, for the business. Then do you get a sense of who manages to to take that on board well and who struggles? Like is there anything about either – things they should do beforehand or the type of business or the type of approach that means that it can be a smoother transition than not from what you've seen? Yeah. Yeah, look, I think um, if, well to, to start with, um, I like to talk about the approach that people you, we use. We use a structured approach, right? right. So it, you know, it's about un, you know picking up every single rock, seeing what's under it, and and you know it might be fine. Yep. Keep going. You're doing a great job. This one could do a slight bit of improvement. This one you haven't got it all you need, and and yep. everybody is different. But because we have a structured approach. Um, it, it, it's, it's a bit like a financial advice process, right? They're, everybody comes in with a Band-Aid. Everyone comes in with Band-Aids here, Band-Aids there. They've got a super fund, but they've never really looked at it, whether it's they've got might have five super funds, they might have something over there. And they've got a bank account. They might have some shares that they bought over there. You know, they've got a mixed bag of lollies and they yeah. walk in and they say, can you sort this out for me? And so it's the same thing with cyber. cyber. So everyone's got something. Some people will have a tech guru um, that they've got had set up a bit of equipment for them and worked for time. Other people won't, and so yeah. that and and that's an important piece of the jigsaw puzzle. So we need to make sure they do have somebody. Um, people will have a password manager. Others won't. Um, yep. You know, and people will share email information on email. Others won't. So everyone's at a different place. I think the the big thing is that. Um, it, you're right. It is a journey, um, mm. and it's not a difficult journey. It's just a whole lot of small steps in a journey. Right. And so, if we break it all down into small steps, it's much easier. You know, the cyber security. That's what I was going to say before. The cyber security thing, the umbrella thing, is a big is one topic. Like cyber security, yeah, that's. But it's actually like me saying financial services. Right. There are so many different <laughs> yep. things okay. going on in financial services. It could be you know self managed super funds. It could be insurance. It could be the and um. You know, cyber is just a whole lot of small topics wrapped up under one umbrella. And um, so it's just a systematic process of going through saying, let's go through everything. You either got it, you're on your journey somewhere, they're on the spectrum, I should say, we're all on the (laughs) spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you're you're in the journey somewhere. And so let's just go through bit by bit and and work work through it. You know, it's sort of, it's not, um, thankfully for me, it's not incredibly difficult. Yeah. It's just a process that you, you all go Got through. Go so, through. Um, yeah, very similar to, I guess, financial services when you think about what all the different strategies are, what all the different products and, and, and funds. If you know all those things, then you can help somebody through that, you know, with their stage in life and all those sort of things. So it's just about working out where you are. And um, it's, it's so interesting. Every, go ahead. Every, I was going to say, everyone, everyone comes in a little bit embarrassed. That's are the you right? Thing There's a little bit of... Please don't judge me for this. Oh, I know I should be better. Yeah. And it's like, stop it. We're all in the same zone. Yeah. Everybody can be better. But let's just work. Let's just sit up, sit up about a process, work through it, and get you to, to where you are. And need you've to. started. Start like nothing's going to get fixed if you don't start. Right. So it's such yep. an important facet yep. of that is just starting. Yep. Um, and it's an interesting analogy, actually. Because I do think what when we look at some of these things and you and we look at it from almost that bigger picture corporate governance sort of approach is our our mental picture is all risk assessment big report oh my goodness four years of project right so like it's, that's the mental picture we have whereas 
it sounds like what you've you've you're delivering with the cyber collective is like the GPS. Like I'm just I just need to follow the directions that the GPS is giving me and do the next thing, you know. And and yep, and then we get to the next thing, and which takes the pressure off. It's like when you're in a foreign country and you've got you've got Google Maps. It just takes the pressure off. I don't have to worry. I just do what Google Maps tells me to do and take the next action. Um, and I think yeah. it can really demystify and sort of take some of the anxiety out of the whole process. Yeah, well, we start. We actually start the process with knowing what the regulatory guidance is, right? Right, and so and so often with advice firms, and then we want to make sure that we're not upsetting the regulators. We're doing the right thing by the the compliance piece of it, and we go, well, well, do you know what the guidance actually is, right? If you, if you don't know what the guidance is, how, how do you, you set it? up a program? And so we and then and then do you have a plan, right? And so what, that's based on the guidance. And then right. when you've got a plan, then then you can go around and say, right, well, we need all these tech things set up. Do we have them all? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, right? And then do you have the budget? Do you understand the supply chain risk? You know, and, and the training of the humans are that ninety percent of issues with cyber involve a human. And so are all the humans trained in the in the in the software that you use? Are they trained in, in the right things to do? Have you done testing? Do you do vulnerability testing and phishing com- campaigns? And like, there's the whole process involved around making sure that the the tech set, uh, the people are trained, but also the you know, you can provide the proof, the compliance piece is is, is relevant to, you know, the Australian-based regulators um, for financial services. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it is a process. Um, but, yeah, it's certainly not one that's that scary. But you're right, the first tip is always the, is the hardest. It is. And it's something that um, sort of, I guess, not surprised me, but but was a bit of a wake-up call for me was this, the behavioural risk, right? So I think we all focus on tech being hardware or software. You know, we forget that it's the human beings using the tech that actually are the risk, right? The actual machine itself is not the problem. It's the humans using it. And anybody that's have to, had to explain how to use like a, a computer or a phone to a, somebody much older understands that the human is the problem, right? So, yeah. so, and that's the case here, right? It's about changing behaviors too. And probably, I mean, I would argue that could be harder than the, you know, hey, go and tweak this this feature or this setting or this, you know, because that's a one-off, one and done, right? Whereas the behavioral change is probably the hardest part of all of this. Yeah, absolutely. And that's probably the same with every product you've ever had on the on the podcast, right? Yeah. There is a product that can work really well, but if you're not utilizing it by the if the humans aren't working with that product in the best possible way, then, you know, that product is never going to get the, you're never going to get hundred percent out of any tech if the humans aren't utilizing it properly. And, um, and if they're utilizing it every day, that's great. They probably can, but you know, we could all do better with some of the, some of the fringe tech that we use around the place. And, 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 that, and you find that people are using it a great way. And you're like, really? You can do that? I have no idea. You know, like yeah. we're not using it that way. Yeah. Well, and look, it's, it's a, um, the other thing I'm finding with this sort of stuff too is, is it feels really big and complex. Uh, and any time we talk about, you know, whether it's two factor authentication or any of these things that come up, um, they are said as it, it, there's these terms. In fact, I think I feel like the public probably feels about financial services. I feel that way about all this stuff, right? Because there's this language used and the language used assumes you fully understand what they're saying. When in, I think for most of us, we have no earthly clue actually what it means. We've got our own little interpretation of it, but until you sort of take a bit of time to actually understand what it means, then you can ask some better questions. I mean, you and I chatted recently about something where, you know, you might want this sort of two, you know, two steps, I guess, to know it's them. But if those two steps are two things that could be hacked then and, and hacked relatively easily, then is it really secure? You know, like it's, it's knowing enough to be able to question that. Um, and I think that's not easy. You know, it's not easy to get your head around that well because often we're dealing with all these different providers and and all this different tech that they're talking about. Yeah, you're right. They're right. They're right. Well, firstly, you're right about the acronyms because there's <laughs> you know cyber the cyber world has a whole lot of fancy. Should I say wanky? I shouldn't say wanky. I don't mean <laughs> that, um, but maybe I should. Um, <laughs> Terms for everything, right? right. Uh, we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, ISMs and, and oh. uh, information security manuals. I mean, that's just that's just weird term for having a plan, right? Right. Making sure you got a plan. Um, cyber incident response plan, CIRPs. You know, that's just making sure that you got a plan in the event of a of an attack that you've you've already thought about it and you've prepared something. Yeah. Um, 
And so there's and yeah, there's just term after term after term that we get into. You know, we think um, we think financial services has lots of acronyms, so does cyber. But at the end of the day, they don't actually matter. What matters is you understand them. And, and a lot of what we do is very similar to advice, where it's a demonstration of understanding. Right. Right. There's this, there's there's these complexities over here. As an advisor, you know them. You know they're going to work for the client. You've just got to explain them to the client in layperson terms that they can understand. Once they understand, they go, oh, no, I get that. I know now why we're doing it. Uh, and it's the same with cyber. Once, I, once with a bit of an explanation and layperson terms, people go, oh, look, I get that now. I know why I'm paying extra for that. Right. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. I feel comfortable with it. I'm confident in that. And it's about that. It's, the, it's very similar to the advice process where there's, you're just taking a complex, uh, co- you know, a complex term or a complex thing, and they're not that complex. To be fair, they're just little bite-sized chunks of complexity. Yep. And then you're ex- you're able to allow people to understand them in a better way without having to get into all the jargon and the in the you know the the fine print of exactly how these things work and and speak like an IT person. <laughs> um, Which is a know. challenge. I mean, it's it's yeah. Yeah, it is a challenge. But I think that it's it's also. I think it's important to take the time to understand, and that's why the sort of education you're talking about is so valuable because there's language we all use that I think can be a bit um, misleading. Something like, you know, you'll talk to somebody and go, oh, but we've got bank level security. Now, that sounds pretty serious, <laughs> but what actually does that mean? And if you think about it, a bank doesn't email its clients, like, it, sorry, email backwards and forwards with its clients all the time. And a bank doesn't hold nearly as much personal information as we do. Yeah. So it's, I, like it's an interesting, do you know what I mean? Like there's this way we talk about this stuff that sort of makes assumptions and, and, and I guess gives it, us comfort on one, on some level. But I think, you know, we're not really bothering to understand what we're saying or what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can get, you can get a bit too involved in the terms and those sorts of things. But you're, you're right. You, know, you don't want bank level security. You, you, you want more than the bank yeah. level security, right? Because the bank, uh, the bank holds doesn't hold as much in client information as you do. They don't have the client's hopes, dreams, goals, aspirations. Yeah. They don't know the client's um, personal statement, their medical history. You know, they they might they may or may not know all their investment uh, super funds and the relationship they have and the history of those funds and the and the and you know their families and and all these other things, right? That that advisors have on record, which is way more important than um, you know information in the bank holds. So you got to think about that from a budgeting point of view. Mm. You know, you don't have the budget of the bank, but you hold way more information. So your security should be should be greater than the bank. And it's about it's about great, you know what you can do better than the bank is you can get your people engaged and right. enthusiastic about security. Um, you know, anybody would say that's the advantage of small business, of small advice firm has over yeah. a bank is is the team. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, the same thing when it comes to cyber, getting your team engaged and, and, and wanting to protect their clients. Every single firm that I work with, their team want to protect their clients, yeah. right? Yeah. There is no doubt. Nobody wants to do multi-factor authentication, but they do want to protect their clients. Yeah. So if they're coming at this from a, Hey, I'm looking after my client. Then that's that's a much better way to do it. And and um, sometimes I lo- I love this question, but people say to me, "Oh, but my clients won't want to do that." You know, they would they happy just to email me the stuff in, and 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 I'm and I'm saying to them, "Well, you know what? Your clients actually want to see you're investing in their protection and yes. their, in looking after them, and and they would actually and and this is mostly the case when advice firms do." say to clients, oh, we're doing it, we've got a new system and process and it's more secure. Clients are like, oh, wow, of course, yeah, that's, this is me we're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. not, uh, it's not about um, the, the extra two seconds it's going to take. It's a, this is about my safety and security. And so, um, yeah, I think that's an opportunity rather than a than a um, Oh, absolutely. To, to and Im- talk about and make those. Imagine mm. the insights. I mean, we've done this um, even through COVID when we're doing more webinars for clients and just engaging with them. We did a lot on, say, scams and then on on cyber and all sorts of things. And, and they're not getting that information from anywhere else, really. I mean, morning TV sometimes has like four bullet points about how you should worry about your password or something. But but at the general public are not necessarily getting 
access to this type of information. So you are doing them a wonderful service. You know, so with some positioning, I completely agree with you. With some positioning, they're going to devour this information. And, you know, and interestingly enough, the government's put together a lot of, there's a lot of materials. There's a lot of, you know, examples and case studies and all sorts of things where if you can point them in the right direction, they'll be like, wow, I didn't realize that's what we were dealing with here. Um, you know, and, and it's so important because they can, they form part of all of this protection too. Their behaviours can can impact this, right? The full supply chain is part of this. Oh, the supply chain is massive, and 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 we, and if we start with the concept of clients, there are a lot. I hear a lot of stories of when, um, uh, you know, somebody has got into a client's email or got into a right. client, and and they're getting they're getting information out of the client's email or computer that 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 demonstrates the relationship they have with the advisor, and that could be an SOA or something like that. But they understand then that there was a strong trusted relationship between the advisor and the client and so they've got that information from the client's computer and they then they then try and manipulate that information either by you know um, sending information to um to product providers saying oh this is my new address this is my new um bank account details etc uh or they're trying to manipulate the conversation with the advisor saying oh can you pay me do this that and the other or they're trying to p- manipulate to pretending to be the advisor back to the client saying you know here's so they're just they're just Cheeky getting in the way, and cheeky is a very slim word for mm. it because I could swear about it. Mm. But um, uh, they're just manipulating that situation. So absolutely, the, the the supply chain. It's not just the advisor. So the advisor and their firm is one part of a chain that goes past the client and onto the client's family. And on the other end of the chain, you've got the product providers, you've got every single piece of technology that they've ever gone and, and signed up for and holding client data and information in. And, and a lot of the time we think, um, here's a great product. It can help us do this X, Y, Z as part of our process and it might give us some efficiencies, which is great. That's what you know tech should be for. Um, but there is also with every single one of those additional pieces of software and additional slight risk that we have to think about Um and so it's about it's about thinking. Well, if that software that we use gets hacked, what happens to our client data and who's responsible? Are they onshore? Are they do they sign up to the privacy principles? Can the government go after them? Is it just us? Is it all fall back on us? The reputation damage tends to fall back on us. If you if you're logging into advisor portals, there's app regulation, um, and and you know what something happens to the you know that inside that portal. Um, and guess what? All of a sudden, you've got a large brand as well as you, and they're they're trying to throw you under the bus. And you know, yeah. it, you know. So it's just it's it goes on and on and on. And we're talking about CRMs, we're talking about email platforms, we're talking about the whole thing. How? What is the? What are the contractual obligations inside that software? If they get hacked, do they have to tell you? If you get hacked, you have to tell them. Like, what what are some of the obligations? When do these things? Um, you know, when do the contracts expire? And the the added thing with that is a lot of financial services businesses rely on their licensee to have those contracts. So right. they don't even they don't even know or have that relationship directly with the with the tech supplier. So all of those things can cause issues to the business. I'm not saying you have to solve every single one of them. But it is a requirement to know about them yeah. as in, uh, you know, a director obligation of the business um, based on the, the asset guidance to be able to say, we know we know about these things, we've thought about them uh, and we've made this decision to do this. You know, you may have thought about it and gone, we think the risk is low, we're happy to keep going. Have you checked with those tech providers? What 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 level of security they have? Do yeah. they have an ISO certification, et cetera, et cetera? And so there's there's a whole lot of little things like that and they're not difficult. Sending you, sending them an email, asking them to give you a copy of their, um, for the framework they use for their cybersecurity. Yeah. Um. You know, yeah. so that you can then say, look, I checked once, and they said this. Yeah. So I yeah. and I believe them, and therefore we're, that's why we're continuing to use them. Yeah. And yeah, and it's an it's, <laughs> it's such an interesting um process all of that because, like you say, you know, we're all going to be using more and more tech. It's not like that's going to get less. It's just not. Right. So, so it's just having a way to handle that each time and the questions you ask and, you know, the, the framing the questions the right way, which is part of understanding the language and understanding the acronyms. You've got to be able to ask the right questions. Um, but because I think the thing that is 
tough. And this is, you know, this is where, you know, when you hit, hit a lawyer, if you ask a, um, <laughs> a corporate lawyer how to minimize risk, you know, their answer would be don't have any clients, right? So you can never wipe out risk com- completely, but it is about understanding what risks you are taking on, like making sure you understand them at the very least. Um, and being informed, right? That's got to be the start. Um, and then it's about you making a decision for the business. It's about you going, right, well, how do we feel about that? And have we complied? And what what else do we need to do? And what other layers can we add in? I mean, it's. I remember seeing a um, a session that a, one of the federal sort of, um, he was actually part of a, a scam group, you know, so it, as in one of the federal guys that sort of looks into those. And he said, what's so interesting about most of the instances is if a human being had called a human being, at some point in these, then this would have been averted in most instances. Now, that's not always all of them, but he said that's the that's the thing with all of this stuff is if you can apply a bit of sensibility to it as well, um, then, you know, you really can shore at least the defence is up quite high. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there, there are a lot of what we do, is, as I said before, is, is around understanding and demonstration of understanding. And the way often we do that is bringing it back into the concept of, behaviors yeah. online versus behaviors in real life and and you know saying to somebody um you know oh can i can i grab your your password people go no yeah of course not but but i send you an email saying can you please update your password you click here and you go oh okay, oh, and, okay. You do and, yeah. so, and so <laughs> you know uh you, you know talking to strangers for example right. talking to strangers easy talk to strangers no worries i've got a they've got a facebook profile and a linkedin profile they, they're not a stranger anymore um but hang on you haven't you've never actually met that person yeah. so yeah there is there is um there is a, a little bit of that i've actually um i've got this uh, but part of what you talked around um you know with with asking good questions at the beginning and prioritization of, and and how do you do that i've got i've got a bit of a framework that i i like to use and it's I've created it based on a um, based on an agile tr- um, prioritization category. I call it ICE, which is um, you know importance. How important is this, this product when it comes to choosing the tech? Uh, uh, then uh, so uh, um, uh, what's it called? ICE, 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 ICE. Uh, uh, anyway, so it talks about the concept of how important is this product? And how practically can we do it? Like, what is right. what, can can do we have to do it, or is, can somebody else put it in place? And then it talks about the cost, and so um, yeah, the, the C is cost. And so when, it, when we look at you know how important is something, can how quickly can we get it in place, and then and then the um, uh, you know the cost of it, and and with the cyber stuff is actually when I when I put that through that process, it actually works out very well. Like it's actually very easy to implement. Right. Um, it's extremely important, and the cost actually isn't that much. Right. You know okay. when you think about all the different things and and you know prioritizing risk in your business, it's one of those ones that most. When I talk to business owners, it's it's one of the things that keeps them up at night. Right. Right. Losing or having their client data or personal information compromised is a big. Uh, concern to a lot of people, and yeah. and a lot of the time people think it's a, it's going to be a big cost that goes with that, but it, it's it's actually Often not. Isn't. It's actually very reasonable. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that'll charge you a lot for it if you want to uh, if you want to pay a lot of money, but um, there's actually a lot that you can, you can do for very low cost. And that's part of the journey too. I, I I mean, even if that's where you're going to end up at, I'd argue going through a process like this to educate yourself and taking some actions as a start means you will better engage with whoever that might be, right? If it's because otherwise you've just got to sort of nod, right? Oh, okay, that sounds good. Well, it just doesn't sound like being a responsible responsible cyber citizen, you know? Like, I mean, that's what it's going to come down to. Is this is all going to be about how we individually behave? I'm sort of curious. So, in terms of then ongoing, I'm betting that there, like there's some reporting, there's information that can then be collated together so that the people can sort of keep an eye on this as well. So this isn't just like a one and done initially. It's sort of an ongoing process. No, I mean, our business is set up as a as an ongoing model. Yep. And so, you know, we call it business as usual. And it really, there's no way that you can learn everything about cyber in, in you know, a short space of time. And nor, that, nor do you want to, because, you know, if you go, as we said before, if you go and cram something of course you, you're never going to re- retain all of it we're, yeah. we're not built that way we've got you know, lives to live but um so ongoing absolutely um we do we do i mean the reporting around you know ongoing education is, is really important but the yeah. reporting around sort of we, we call it the audit the once a year audit where you, you you can demonstrate your business is up to speed 
really good for the regulators, good for your, your insurers, good for um, if you ever wanted to sell your business, good for um, your clients, conversations, just to be able to say, look, our, our award is quite comprehensive. We've done this, this and that. And um, those sort of conversations with clients are great. Um, but I think uh, what we do a little bit differently is than, than, than most cyber businesses is we don't start with the audit. We don't go, let's do an audit. Um, let's make you feel really bad about yourself. Um, let's put some, you know, uh, intimidate you into saying you need to do all these things uh, and then then do another audit and, and then demonstrate how, how much of a good job we've done um, because you've gone from here to here. What we actually do is we say, well, let's not start with the audit. Let's not hold a bad audit on file. Let's just get you up to speed. Like we said, uncover each of those rocks and yeah. then do the audit. And so, yeah, we, we, we're a little bit different than most uh, businesses because, uh, you know, we've all been through audits. We don't love them. So why do two when you can do one? Especially why do why do a bad one when you can do a good one? And and it is it's 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 it actually as you were describing that then it reminded me actually of of personal training and and where a lot of the these gyms the first thing they get you to do is a weigh in and a measure, and I get why they're doing it right. They're putting a line in the sand for you, but it is the most traumatizing and negative experience to start this journey that should feel empowering and positive with this thing that makes you feel shitty about where you're at. I mean, it's the same issue, isn't it? None of us feel confident about this stuff, about cyber. So, you know, probably the last thing we need is somebody to tell us how you probably should feel even less confident, you know? You're really not a <laughs> not Yeah, a the, last, the last thing I want to do is make pe- people feel like crap as they right. walk in, you know, like – It's just uh, not helpful. You're right, though. It's it's. it's- it's a really smart thing for those gyms to do. It just it's not a great user user experience. Yeah, it? for sure. In terms of then the you've you've had practices and groups come on board and and go through the process and and still going through the process. Has there been any you know surprises in that or surprising outcomes or realizations or or anything like that that sort of come out of the, that that sort of process from practices? Yeah, I guess. Well, it's fair to say that we've pivoted over the years. You know, there's there's been um, some change in our business over the years. Um, there's been as as things have developed, and um, we've gone from being quite technical to more human centric. Yep. I guess uh, over those last few years, um, it, you know, we sort of started out. I guess it's the same as when I was an advice. We started out being, you know, you started out going, I've read the PDSs, I know all the technical stuff. Yeah. Let me tell you about that. And then as you gain experience as advice, you're like, actually, no, it's about humans. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's about people. And so, um, and so, yes, we definitely made that mistake. You know, starting out wanting to know and, and get involved in every technical issue in the business, which is great because it's, you know, you you've got to know the technical stuff. Yeah. You just don't need to. Um, make sure everybody else knows it um so so yeah you know there's been there's been there's been some great but i think um i think like advice we all love the positive outcomes right yeah. when the clients come in and they can see the value in what you're doing and they can see the the value of what they're spending versus what they're getting out of it um and they're really happy with where they're at now and they're feeling good about the you know being more confident, they feeling all these good feelings, and, and that's the part that you know I think drives us all. Yeah. Um. In, in that space, yes, yes, we love the you know we love to nerd out about some of the technical stuff. We can see it's in a better position and all those sorts of things. But you know that reaction from your your clients is is a you know hellishly rewarding. Yeah, for sure. And I'm I'm betting that um you know there's always surprises for people. You know it's 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 something that we all do as business leaders. No, 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 we never do that. Like the, for all sorts of things, for all sorts of reasons. No, 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 nobody here does that. I'm betting there's, as the process has gone along, they realize there's one team member who, and not out of malice, just out of, like you say, behavioral or, or, or a lack of training is doing something that, whoa, 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 we didn't know that was the case. All right, yeah. we need to retrain. I'm betting that comes up when people go through this process too. Yeah, I think um, – I, th- I think everybody everybody's in that s- scenario. Once once we've gone through a lot of our process, people are like, "Wow, this is this this we we didn't know that, and we didn't know we didn't know, which is yeah. and now we know, which is great." Um, and then there are you write those things that people know that they should be doing better, but they're looking for an accountability buddy to 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 make that happen. Right. And um and and so we play a bit of that as well, you know, in, in that scenario where we said it needs it should we really should be here? Can we all agree on that? Yes. Uh, what do we need to get it here? What do we need to do? Can we prioritize that? Um, and and like anything, the reason we we did you know we do the audit last is because um, we want to make sure everything's done before the audit. Yeah. But we also need to put them like like everything um, timeframes around that as well because yep. um, you know when we first started the business, it was like we'll get to the audit when you're ready. Uh, these days, we're more like let's put a let's put a, de- a deadline in there. And we'll work to it, and then 
and we find that that actually gets more stuff done. Yeah. So it's kind of a bit about that. Thank you for we didn't know that, and then it starts out, and then the accountability buddy stuff kicks in. Um, very similar to you know, I guess when there's a deadline on something, people on oh, anything it runs around and gets the gun. Of yep. course, I mean, I'm in fact, I have a problem in that respect. If if something doesn't have a deadline, <laughs> then I'm just I'm just one of those like I work under well under extreme pressure, right? So that's, in fact, that's, that's subhuman not pressure. Problem. It's not yeah. it's not good, right? Because yeah. that seems good for people who don't handle that. Well, it seems good. Like exams. Exams don't bother me, right? That sort of pressure, nope, doesn't bother me. But the problem is then for somebody like me, sometimes you need to sort of manufacture that to then get things done. Yeah, because- so I, think, I think that deadline is uh, you're in a small group of people called the rest of the world yeah. um, of people that are affected by that. And so it's always good, you know, like that's human. Again, yeah. everything we do is about, you know, awareness training and understanding. Are we doing this thing? Yeah. Is it is it is it going to sink in? Is it is it valuable? Um, it, you know, if, it, if it's in one area and out the other, then it's not worth doing. So. Yeah, for sure. So, in terms of move, like looking forward for the cyber collective, is there? If, have you got things on the development path? Is there places you're you're keen to take it, or, or things you're going to be adding on over time? Where, where do you see it heading? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, the, the thing about what we're doing is we've been very conscious all the way along that. Um, that we want to move to a very scalable position, and right. so we're working a lot with um, with firms one on one, and and that you know that's not that scalable. But all of this information that we gather over time is is scalable, and education and training and short courses are, are scalable. Um, so you know we've been able to keep the pricing low because we're going to scale, yeah, uh, and 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 make it that way. So you know, financial services, financial professionals, professional service firms, all those all those firms in the country that hold personal uh, information. The the thing about all those firms, and I can say this with tongue in cheek, mm-hmm. is they're kind of cookie cutter, right? right? Everyone's got an email. Everybody yeah. kind of uses Google or Gmail right. or Microsoft. Um, everybody holds personal private information. Everybody needs to do a backup. Everybody, you know, uses passwords. Yeah. And so we can actually work with firms all over Australia and come to think of it, New Zealand, you know, um, South Africa, Singa- around the world, there's, uh, although a lot of our stuff's based on Australian regulation, Australian mm-hmm. regulation is very good. And so we can actually say to firms, it's kind of, what you need to do anyway. Anyway, and so, yeah. and so from we've got the concept of you know moving from financial services into other professional services, from you know accounting to um, you know auditing to um, uh, all sorts of other you know yeah. solicitors, lawyers, um, you know yeah. um, all sorts of other firms, mortgage brokers, um, etc. Uh, and but we've also got the the vertical to say we can scale overseas. So yeah. it's about going um, you know using what we know. From here, which is good practice and good practice around the world, and some of our and our frameworks are actually global frameworks, which 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 is great. Um, but yeah, from here, it's um it's about turning, making sure that everybody can um, get involved, get their uplift uh, at a reasonable price, and getting um and, and putting scale into it. And it's a it's. It's such an interesting point in terms of you know going global. You know what the internet did is made the world really small, um, and it, hence part of the risk. <laughs> Like if we only had to, you know, maybe if we only had to, you know, defend ourselves against Australian criminals, then, well, that's only one level, you know, but now we've got all these, you know, all these groups overseas. So it just, it it sort of reinforces the need for all of this is it's not oh, just our absolutely. local patch. Yeah, yeah, and you, and you and I are both uh, in in the uh, zone where we remember um, paper based files and yes. filing cabinets, and um, and so that was that was you know not very good for structure you know it was very unstructured data and we couldn't go and search for things very easily unless we use the alphabetical system. Yeah. Um, but uh, but what that did actually was mean that um, you know hackers from uh, all, all over the world couldn't come and steal the information out of your office unless they were that geolocation thing was turned on, right? <laughs> like they actually had to be physically there. in your office yeah. to steal the information, whereas nowadays they don't have to be in your office and in 24-7 you're, you know, you you can be exposed. So um, you're absolutely right. You know, the old paper-based files, whilst it was terribly for a structured data, um, uh, was, you know, to, had, had an element of security to it because of the location and it was locked inside a filing cabinet inside a locked office. But um that was your multi-factor, too locked. <laughs> yes. uh, so, on the door, uh, so yeah, look, on the, on the yeah. cupboard. <laughs> but the, re- the reality is we're here now, right, yeah. and we're all in a digital world, but yeah. we just have to make sure that we adapt 
um, completely to what we have in front of us and to the to where we're going. You know, with AI comes a whole lot of new challenges. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to Chat GPT, for example, how easy is it to write a phishing email now with Chat GPT mm. rather than all the grammatical errors are gone? Um, and and if you want to write it, you know, oh, oh, I'm I'm the CEO of a financial services company. And I want to give all my staff a pay rise at Christmas time. Can you write me a happy, joyful email letting them know? And um, and I'll add the link into my malware yeah. uh, after that, you know. And so um, even that now, you know, it was easier to spot a phishing email because there might be grammatical errors in it. Um, they're all gone now. You yeah. just get ChatGPT to correct them all for you. Yeah. So, I mean, AI is adding a whole new uh, level of sophistication into um, the world of cybercrime. So it's it's about not that we can stay ahead of it, but it's about staying with it Responding and making sure to, people yeah. know about it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, is there any parts of the sort of uh, cyber collective offer or the experience we've missed? Have we sort of touched on the key elements? Yeah, our key, our three key elements is, uh, are essentially the ongoing learning education platform, uh, the cyber uplift and audit process. Um, you know, uplift first, then the audit, and then the, and then the the you know the idea of how do these audits go with our policies and procedures? Do we have all those policies, plans, procedures in place? Um, and then and then kind of. The, a lot of those plans and policies and procedures are always about annually reviewing them. Right. So it's about quickly going back here. It's, it's the same as a financial advice review every year, just a quick review. Yes, it's all good. Add a couple of things. Has there been a problem, et cetera? Do, a, do the audit again, um, annual audits, and, and, and go from there. So it, um, it's kind of, yeah, that's what we're about, making sure the practice is, is secure, uh, making sure the people in the practice or the, and, um, you know, the teams are trained. Perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about the Cyber Collective, then the website link is in the show notes, along with Fraser's LinkedIn details. So feel free to give him a nudge and he can point you in the right direction. Thank you so much for joining us here today and really sharing how you guys are sort of empowering us to protect, you know, our practices and our staff and even our clients. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. So, are you a current member of the Cyber Collective? Um, you know, are there other parts of the service that you've taken advantage of? Are you early in your journey? Um, have you been using them for a while? Uh, you know, please share your experience and your insights on the Ensemble Community Platform. We'd all love to hear our take. This is a journey that is relatively new to all of us. So, um, you know, I think collectively then we can learn from each other and cheer each other on and make further progress. And so I know I would love to hear how what your experience has been like or, you know, perhaps you use another service um, or similar tool, uh, but please share how you're going on this front of, you know, really arming ourselves against these cyber risks because it's something that's just going to be perpetually a part of, of our businesses going forward. In terms of my thoughts on this, you know, it's so interesting we really can focus on the fact that there is, it's tech, right? And so we think it's about the features. We think it's about the settings we put on. We think, you know, all these, all these things we can do and whether it's a password manager, all those, all those sort of things. And there's absolute value in those, but it's so interesting, the impact over a long period of time that a new great habit can form. So, and that's, you know, where this training comes in. It's, it's helping you and, the, and your teams, all of our teams have these new great habits. And, and it made me reflect on back when I was young and, and, you know, sort of in my late teens and learning to drive. And I happened to have um, some lessons from a a guy who actually was a limo drive driver, um, but he also taught kids how to drive. And, and, his one habit that he taught me was always locking the car from the outside. Now, for those of you who are blessedly young enough to only ever have, you know, automatic openers and things where that's how you get in and out of the car, then you'll never have had this problem. But back in the day, it was very common for those of us who were new to starting to drive to end up having to call our folks because we'd locked our keys in the car because we'd left the keys in the console, got out, pushed down the lock on the car and closed the door. And then we've locked the keys in the car. This was really normal. And he taught me this habit where you always lock the car using the key from the outside. And it meant in my life, I have never locked my keys in my car. Uh, and it's just interesting when I reflected on how that little small thing he taught me held me in good stead all those years, um, all those years going forward. And so really, you know, this type of training platform, this type of thing that can just teach us these new habits. Yes, it's going to, you know, 
get us to do some things that that we change in terms of the systems or what we're doing with them and asking questions of our providers and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely. But it's also going to help us and our teams build these better habits um, that can really be a great part of our defense. And over time, we'll really add up to some incredible value. So I think, you know, education, um, bite-sized bits of education are going to make a huge difference to that uh, and not overcomplicating it too much. So I really love that idea. And I think there's some power in um, giving out all of our teams the opportunity to take part in things like that. Now, as you know, there's only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, folks, and that's avid curiosity. And to help you build that habit, I've got a fun one for you today, folks, in our curiosity corner. This is a website uh, that I'd love you to take a look at called Fake You. Um, And I'm actually going to insert a piece of audio that I created using Fake You of me doing that Curiosity Corner little introduction there. Um, and it's in fact me as Darth Vader. As you know, there is only one skill we need to become Bionic Advisors, and that's avid curiosity. And to help you build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner website that I'd love you to take a look at is Fake You. So now, having heard that, the reason I actually wanted to put this website in here, aside from it being fantabulously fun, right? And you can find it at fakeyou.com, F-A-K-E-Y-O-U.com. And you can pick all sorts of characters. There's also like thousands of characters and you can just do a recording and then change it. You can even do a recording and pick an avatar and it'll turn the turn the avatar and it'll sync with your talking, right? All of this is amazing. But the other thing that to me, it really demonstrates is how easy it would be to mimic somebody else. You know, this is just another example of the risks that are out there um, and the technology that's available so that people can and can imitate other people. Um, so I really would encourage you to take a look. Um, you know, technology has come a long way and I think it's helpful to see and experience what's available out there uh, just to understand how far it has come and, and may potentially the risk that that could involve down the track of somebody, you know, mimicking or, or imitating somebody else. But also it's loads of fun and I think could be some great fun in your marketing efforts, maybe in your social media or something you would normally do. You could have, you know, said in Darth Vader or you could have it in all sorts of characters. They've got Mario Brothers. They've got all sorts of stuff there that you can have um, your uploaded uh, voice and they'll they'll convert it for you. So check it out and I'd love to hear what you did as your own conversion um, and hear at least the fun you had with it as you experimented with the tool. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you're ready to really achieve zen in the world of advice tech, then be sure to nudge your dealer group or nudge your group to reach out to hear about my new keynote for 2024, the zen of advice tech, finding balance in the digital age. You know, in a world where technology can be super duper overwhelming, as Fraser and I were just chatting about, this session will sort of show you how to streamline your tech stack, right? And really enhance client relationships all while applying a particularly mindful approach to tech mastery. So I'd love to embark on that path with you to get a more focused, efficient and really rewarding operational environment together. So if you are curious, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn at forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. And I'd love to have a chat. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 